looking at the half with Sarah Hall there, again, you know, she's around the same age as D'Amato. Now, they took very different routes to the American records, but they both were unorthodox in their own way. D'Amato, not running for several years. Hall, switching events, all the fits and starts. She talked about how she contemplated retirement, then goes to the roads. Even in the way she runs road races is a bit different. She races so frequently, puts herself out there a lot, but she breaks Molly Huddle's mark, runs 67, 15. Um, you got a chance to go to the press conference afterwards. What were her thoughts on on actually getting this record? Yeah, I mean, she was just as kind of like in awe and kind of tears of joy type moment as Kira was. And I think also the fact that there's such cool little sy symmetry to her breaking a half marathon record on the same course 15 years later after her husband broke the American record in the half. And so now like the fact that the U.S. half marathon duo of the halls, yeah. this is kind of all both being done in Houston, 15 years apart, very different career trajectories. She was sat on the back of the lead cart when Hall broke the American record 15 years ago. And little did she know that 15 years from that moment, she would be able to be on the other side of the, the other side of the coin and be able to run an American record. And it, she just looked smooth the entire time. There was, she was confident. It was a unique situation where the eventual winner did pull away. So she kind of was running her own race. She was kind of winning her own the, she was in that leading the second pack. So there wasn't really the thought of winning the race early on because the eventual winner won by two minutes. Um, and Sarah brought, pulled along with her like incredible performances. Like Fiona O'Keefe ran out of her mind. She finished right behind. Dom Scott ran out of her mind. She finished close behind. So like there were other women that she kind of pulled along to have like not just a great day for Sarah, but a great day for Dom Scott, Fiona O'Keefe. And Again, when you just look at both the, mar the, the the full marathon and the half marathon, it was just incredible performances all around. Yeah, and that's why that depth is why I think we're going to see this more and more. Now, a lot of it comes down to just the amount of opportunities you have and is the are the fields going to come together? Is the weather going to be great? But when you have O'Keefe and just on the American side, I'm not even talking about everybody else because Chepenko ran 65 low. I mean, that's yeah. one of the fastest. Like, that's one of the fastest half marathons that we've ever seen it's and, all time. yeah and then you and then and then you have O'Keefe and Durgan now moving well into the top 10 for the U.S. I think we're going to see this like if you told me is the women's American record in the half going to be in the 66s by this time next year like after the Houston half next year I would say yes I think this is the start the starting point yeah I mean within the next four years do you think both of these records will be broken? Within the next how many years? Four years. Oh, yeah. Do you think yeah, we'll have a I new think... U.S. Women's yes. American record holder in the marathon and half? Yes. I think the half will be gone by next year for sure. And then I think the marathon, may even it will be less than two years before that marathon record is broken. Less than, less than two years. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think the talent is there because it's not just about D'Amato. Right. There's all that we've talked on and on and on about how deep U.S. women's marathoning is right now. Now, a lot of it's going to come down to opportunity. How many fast races are available that year? All it takes is, you know, you know Houston having bad weather or Berlin or London having bad weather. Chicago, the pace. You know, there's no pacers. in. Well, no, there are pacers in Chicago now. The pacer screws up or something. And then and then the three chances dwindle and then there, there's few opportunities. But if they keep doing things like the Marathon Project or. They have great race situations, and I think we're going to see it more and more. Because, listen, if if the if the front of the field is pacing for 216 or 215 or 214, like Bridget Koskai, and th they're able to run those marks, I think you're going to have a, a trickle-down effect where the women behind that group are going to get pulled along to fast times, and just the depth is there for them. 